After the 1975 election, Sir Philip became treasurer and brought down two budgets before he became involved in a controversy that involved profits from land deals and a family trust that received those profits. It was a political scandal that had everything. The federal treasurer, alleged land speculation, a family trust, and all happening in the middle of a federal election campaign. The land was bought from a company called Stumpy Gully Estates. No one in politics is ever indispensable. Malcolm Fraser's treasurer, Philip Lynch, was forced to stand aside in late 1977 over the colourfully named Stumpy Gully affair. Fraser subsequently called on former Liberal Attorney General and then Chief Justice of the Federal Court, Nigel Bowen, to hold an inquiry into the separation of politicians' public duty and private interests. This established codes of conduct for parliamentarians and public servants and confidential registers of ministers' pecuniary interests. The Hawke government subsequently made the register of interests public and applicable to all parliamentarians. This history is relevant to the situation the former Attorney General Christian Porter finds himself in today. We don't know who has donated a substantial amount of money to funding his legal fees for his now settled defamation action against the ABC and journalist Louise Milligan, and we don't know how much. Mr Porter is now under intense pressure to answer these questions. Christian Porter's update to his declaration of interests this week says that there was a part contribution to the payment of my fees by a blind trust known as the Legal Services Trust. As a potential beneficiary, I have no access to information about the conduct and funding of the trust. The Bowen report from 1979 is relevant because of what it had to say about blind trusts of the sort Porter says has been the source of the funding. It should not be possible to avoid the obligation to disclose an interest, whether by registration or by declaration, through concealment in a trust arrangement. I mean, this is the same as somebody in a mask walking into Mr Porter's office and delivering a chaff bag full of cash and saying, right, there you are, that'll help you with your legal expenses. I'm off, you don't know who I am. I know pubs are closed at the moment, but this does not pass the pub test. Left, OK. All right. Malcolm Turnbull says that, contrary to our report last night, he did not put his assets in a blind trust when he was in Parliament. There was no trust, no blind trust at all. But he argues that the intention of MPs using blind trusts is the opposite of the Porter case anyway. They are supposed to involve politicians putting a wall between them and their own money when they're in office. But that is not what Christian Porter has done. This is not his money, right? This is somebody or bodies. We don't know whether they're foreigners. A spokesperson for Mr Porter told 7.30 yesterday that the minister had acted in accordance with the requirements of the register and consistent with previous members' disclosure of circumstances where the costs of personal legal matters have been mitigated by contributions or reductions in fees, and that no taxpayers' funds were used in meeting the costs of the minister's actions against the ABC and journalist Louise Milligan, which have now concluded. Well, no, it is not in accordance with the intention of the register. It is not consistent with previous members' disclosures. The fact that no taxpayers' funds were involved is irrelevant. Mr Porter has driven a truck through the requirements of the disclosure rules. Instead of disclosing who gave him this gift of hundreds of thousands of dollars, he's pretending not to know, he's pretending to comply, he either discloses where this money was from or he gives it back. There are no other choices. Beyond the MP's declaration of interests, there is the question of the Statement of Ministerial Standards, ostensibly policed by the Prime Minister, which says, Ministers shall ensure that they do not come under any financial or other obligation to individuals or organisations to the extent that they may appear to be influenced improperly in the performance of their official duties as Minister. So if Scott Morrison thinks it's OK for a Cabinet Minister to accept large amounts of cash from who knows whom, then that is a big shift downwards in the integrity of public administration and government in Australia. It's shocking. It shouldn't be left to the parliament to deal with this when we go back on the 18th of October. 
Mr Morrison, the Prime Minister of Australia, should be enforcing his own statement of ministerial standards and requiring either that Mr Porter return the money if he does, genuinely does not know where it's from or that he finds out where it's from and discloses it. This morning, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg was defending his Cabinet colleague. He's disclosed it in accordance uh, with the rules and uh, the parliamentary register. But late this afternoon, signs emerged that both Christian Porter and the Treasurer have been isolated by their Prime Minister. Mr Porter's future is now under a significant cloud. In response to questions from 7.30, a spokesperson for the Prime Minister said, quote, The Prime Minister is taking this matter seriously and has discussed the matter with the Minister today. The Prime Minister is seeking advice from his department on any implications for the ministerial standards and any actions the Minister must take to ensure that he meets the standards. In other words, a rare admission from the Prime Minister that one of his ministers may not be meeting ministerial standards. That gives Mr Porter two options, to reveal his financial supporters or resign. And the PM, two options too, to accept that such a revelation resolves the problem or finally cast his minister loose. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.